This is ABF. Much like the waistband of MacGyver's trousers, Immortals of Avium is a gun-free zone. This may sound like a peculiar predicament for a first-person shooter to place itself in, but developer Ascended Studios has made it work. How, you ask? Magic. And I'm not being facetious here, I mean literal barrages of brightly coloured bullets magically blasted from the fingertips of a bloke who really puts the war in Warlock. An unexpected collision of traditional high fantasy adventure with slick FPS action, Immortals of Avium boasts a wonderful backdrop for its classy combat and comes with everything I crave in a modern shooter. It's striking to look at, sturdy to play, and it's strictly single player only. There are times when Immortals of Avium feels like Wolfenstein with wizards and others when it feels like Doctor Strange has been airdropped directly into Doom. It's a curious concoction, but it's one that works surprisingly well, and I've particularly enjoyed how different Avium is to anything I've played in recent memory. The firefights are frantic and visually spectacular, the light platforming and puzzle work is generally satisfying, and the world itself is very well crafted. Avium's arcane punk aesthetic is very absorbing and creates a world of interesting extremes. It's a world where magic is ubiquitous and powers highly advanced technology for war-torn societies still living a medieval-inspired lifestyle. This means wild flying machines and mind-bending virtual puzzle rooms juxtaposed against gilded castles and ramshackle timber slums. It's a cool clash of styles, and straddling multiple genres seems to suit Avium's ambitions as a first-person shooter with a twist. We play as Jack, who, in a moment of extreme stress in the opening phase of the story, is suddenly revealed to possess the power of a Triarch, an extremely rare person able to wield the world of Avium's three forms of magic simultaneously. Ah! What's happening? Jack subsequently finds himself drafted into the Ever War, a battle for control over Avium's magic that has been raging for millennia but appears to be barreling towards a catastrophic conclusion. Politics, land, ideologies, all of that is secondary to the control of magic. The story's specifics get a little lost in the weeds during occasional salvos of fantasy phrases but it's otherwise easy to follow, and there's a regular cadence of moderate twists to keep it from getting bogged. If you want to get seriously steeped in lore, there's a lot of optional stuff to dig through, but it definitely isn't required to sufficiently understand what's going on. There are some very elegant ecological and social parables tucked in here too, and I ultimately appreciated the contemporary relevance, and that the story just wasn't spinning its wheels mindlessly. I've noticed some resistance to the choice to use modern vernacular and colloquialisms in Avium's dialogue, but I honestly can't see myself being as engaged as I was if Ascendant had opted instead for po-faced pseudo-early modern English. In fact, I'd argue that leaning on archaic language would only undermine how otherwise fresh and modern Avium feels in the first-person shooter space. Not every line lands. Does he always love to hear himself talk this much? Well, Jack. I mean, I can't say no. Look, how about we table the culture clash for a bit, huh? And there's a certain Generation Z angst about Jack that I didn't always find entirely endearing, but the performances are good and I can get behind it broadly. Also, I don't know about you, but I don't know that I need all my fantasy stories sifted through a Shakespeare filter just to dress up the dialogue with some 400-year-old dribble. You talk like fear with its pants too tight. I think they look good. On default difficulty, AVM kept me busy for well over 20 hours to reach the credits. It's nicely paced and strikes a good balance between switching up our surroundings for new locations and returning us to places we've already visited. While there are a few drab and dreary spots, most of AVM's environments are exceptionally good looking, from its giant lava pools to its icy and jagged crystal caves. The excellent lighting is regularly a strong component of what makes Avium's levels so eye-catching. It's a relatively linear experience and not a single open world, but there are some maps that are admittedly quite large and primed for exploring off the main path. There were definitely occasions I found myself slightly frustrated at Jack's inability to leap on or over surfaces that looked entirely suitable for standing on, 
but my bigger frustration was the lack of communication around things Jack couldn't access yet by design. For instance, AVM was very quick to have Jack drop an audio solution to an environmental puzzle I was already well on top of solving. I can stun him on the pressure plate. But it's also content to leave me fruitlessly trying to figure out how to get into a bonus area Jack literally hasn't been rewarded with the ability to do yet. Jack's list of abilities is, however, impressively long. They're also rationed out until quite deep into the story, meaning things that might have stumped us hours and hours prior may suddenly make sense. Avian feels a little plain at first when Jack just has access to his initial basic spell strikes, but as the story progresses, he gains access to far more interesting abilities and attacks. These include things like sticky charges that have a slow motion effect, the ability to hover after a double jump, and a lash that drags enemies closer for an easier close quarters kill. Avium is undoubtedly a lot more than a disguised military shooter with finger guns. The finger guns are a fun touch though, and they're essentially split into three categories. Blue magic attacks function as a large caliber pistol, green magic attacks manifest as rapid fire SMG rounds, and red magic attacks are essentially a sawn off shotgun. Red attacks are reloaded by fist pumping by the way. Now we know what Tiger Woods is doing every time he sinks a putt. However, if you're worried this means there are only three basic weapons in Avium, don't be. There are variations on each that change their damage and fire rate depending on the associated sigil you equip to Jack's arm, and there's also another layer of secondary attacks, from damaging blast waves to volleys of magic missiles. There's even an extremely potent beam that combines all three magic colors into a single destructive torrent gushing forwards like someone just knocked Cyclops' sunglasses off. I really enjoy how powerful this attack makes Jack feel, and it's crucial in some of the tougher boss battles. Avium does motivate us to engage with discovering and experimenting with new sigils, although it also didn't punish me for settling with the ones I had already fully upgraded and sticking with them until the end of the story. There's a significant degree of controller gymnastics required to get the most out of AVM's combat. I would also say that, as a man with the multitasking abilities of a peanut, it certainly grazes the upper limit to the amount of systems I can effectively juggle at once. At its most hectic, I was nursing multiple ability cooldowns, boosting both my health and mana levels, switching sigils depending on which enemy poses the most immediate threat, and slinging special spells to deal out the fastest damage I can, all while building my special attack. At times, I felt on top of it. At other times, things descended into panicked blasting. The strength of Avium is that it all looks rather spectacular either way. Whether you're efficiently and ruthlessly carving through enemies with focus and finesse, or wading into battle spamming spells and seeing what works, combat is a wild storm of shattering shields and colorful fireworks at a welcome 60 frames per second on consoles. Movement is smooth and Jack feels agile and responsive compared to the bulk of his foes. Jack is, by definition, one of the most dangerous battle mages in all of Avium, and I certainly felt like that most of the time. Immortals of Avium is an impressively confident first-person shooter that successfully trades muzzles and magazines for mages and magic. Its fast-paced spellcasting combat is both satisfying to master and spectacular to look at, and it features a lengthy and hardy campaign packed with secrets to keep us going well after the story has wrapped. As someone who desperately hopes that unapologetically single-player shooters will live forever, these immortals have done a great job of making sure they're definitely not dead yet. For more recent verdicts, check out our reviews for Moving Out 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. And for everything else, stay with IGN. Drink up, nerds.